We're thankful the Lord's given us another opportunity to come this way here to Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, thankful for the church allowing us to come this way. And uh, we thank you for your prayers. And we'd like to ask you for your prayers for a member of the church as well as some other brethren that have traveled to Guatemala. Uh, Brother Troy Swindle, a member here, uh, has made that uh, uh, effort to go that way. And we uh, have already heard of good services that they're having. Uh, and the opportunity that's there, such a rich field, and we certainly need to pray that the Lord will bless greatly, that many lost souls will be saved, and we pray that those brethren will be able to make it home safely. I uh, uh, have bowed and I've prayed on the way up here, and I've, I've prayed here uh, before. I, I've got started uh, here this morning and tried to. I've been very congested and uh, uh, choked up for some reason this morning, and I need the Lord's help. And I uh, I, I don't normally uh, pray at all uh, on camera. Um, I, I try not to waste uh, your time, maybe, is what my thought is, and just get to it. But I'm going to have to bow my head, and uh, and I pray this morning uh, before uh, we get started, uh, even if it's a short prayer. Uh, and I pray that you will um, pray uh, for me. And pray for the word that it would find its place where it needs to. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come this way. We thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us, Lord, this opportunity. We thank you, God, for this church and for thy church in this world and this part of the world in which we've been raised. And we thank you, O oh, Heavenly Father, for the home in which we were given, Lord, as a little boy raised up going to church and all that we've ever known. That doesn't make me special that I've done something. Lord, it's you're the one that's special, and I want to thank you for allowing us this opportunity. And, Lord, here I am, Lord, these many years later, and I would have never dreamed as a boy that I would be here today. And, Lord, it's I'm humbly approaching you because it's a fearful thing and I worry about handling this in the right way and I pray that you'd help me too. I pray that you'd bless those that would listen. I pray that you would help those that are in need. I pray more than anything that you would save a lost. Comfort the bereaved, oh Lord. And I pray God that you would get a hold of those that are lost separated from you. Bring Brother Troy in. Uh, Brother Junior and Brother Mitch and Brother Kobe, bring them all home safe from Guatemala and bless them there. And I pray, oh, my Father, that you'd help us as we will gather together, Lord, if there is a tomorrow, and that, Lord, we gather together at this church and, and uh, churches round about us for their services. I pray that you'd bless in a great and mighty way. Bless our preacher, brethren, Lord. Uh, bless, Lord, the members of the church, and I pray, God, that you bless them, each one. And thank you, Lord, more than anything for saving my unworthy soul. In Jesus' name we do pray and ask it all. Amen. We're going to look in the book of Mark in the ninth chapter in verse 1 for a uh, reading lesson. Um, Mark 9 and 1. The Lord doing the speaking here says, And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. That one verse of scripture there will be our reading lesson, at least a uh, uh, starting point uh, for some thoughts the Lord's laid upon our heart. Because here the Lord is doing the speaking that he is, says here, that there should be some of them that stand here which shall not taste death. I, I don't believe as the Lord was uh, saying these words that he was uh, meaning that there were people that were, very, that were present, that were in his presence at that very moment of time that would never die in the physical body. I don't believe that he was speaking here to individuals saying, I'm going to keep you from dying. Uh, until this event, uh, till they see the kingdom of God come uh, in power. I don't believe that that is what his intent was. I believe according to, and now the reason I know, and I don't even believe it, I know, 
is because the individuals that he spoke to at that time and that were around them and that were following him, that those individuals have died. Now, uh, they've left this world. They went on to their reward. Uh, uh, we find that uh, Peter, James, and John, they've all died. Uh, that all those uh, uh, early apostles, those disciples that the Lord set in his church to begin uh, his uh, uh, church here in this world, they, they've all died. They, they've left. So if it meant that they had, he would not let them die until a future time when they would see the kingdom of God come in power, then God has broken his promise. Uh, but it, God hasn't broken his promise because he did not mean that these specific individuals would not see death. Uh, that they, uh, uh, but here we find that it is speaking to the Lord's church. That it is speaking to them as a body, as one body uh, that would never die. That there would be some of them uh, that stand here that were there present uh, that would not taste death until they see the kingdom of God come in power. I believe here it is a distinct promise of our Lord and Savior, and I find all of God's promises to be true. Uh, we find that God cannot lie, so we know that he was not uh, uh, giving a promise that he cannot keep, one that he did not intend to keep. I believe the Lord here was allowing them to see and them to know in confidence for us today that when the Lord returns, uh, that when we see the end of time, there will be people somewhere within this world organized into a local body of Jesus Christ. I pray that it's here at Friendship Church. I pray that it's Athens Church and all these churches around about us, those scattered across the world. I pray that they're there and they're practicing and they're holding on until the coming of the Lord. But even if we fail and we fall away, I can assure you today that the Lord's church will be here when he comes back. And they will see the Lord coming in his glory. I mind over another promise to go along with this that would uh, even further signify this. Uh, here in Matthew in the 28th chapter, uh, we find here in verse 16 is these 11 disciples. Now, these 11 disciples uh, were there together. They come as individuals, but when they gathered together, they were one local body. They were the Lord's church. They were his kingdom in this world. It says here, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee into a mountain to where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things wherever, uh, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. So we find that here again, the Lord is making a promise. He's making an assurance uh, that here, I don't believe he is making it to these 11 individual disciples, these 11 uh, original apostles that were set into the church, but he is giving that promise to one local body uh, and that local body, he gave a commission or he gave a, a job, the, uh, uh, the authority to go forth preaching the gospel to all the world and those that believe to be baptized into his church by the commandment of God and then to teach them more. And then he says, and he gives us the assurance. He gave them the assurance. And it gives me the assurance today that the Lord is still with his church. And lo, I am with you all. Always. He is always with us when we are near unto him. If the church remains faithful to him and does not pollute or destroy or tear down or give in to the world and remains faithful to the Lord, I believe he is with them always, even 
until the end of the world. Amen. I believe he is speaking to his church here saying, I'll never leave you. I will be with you until the end of the world. I believe that is in harmony with this verse of scripture in the book of Mark in 9 and 1 that he is telling them, I will be with you. I, there will be people standing in this world declaring my gospel when I return in my glory. I believe that. There are people in the world today that would uh, uh, make it seem as though that they are looking for a future event, a future time for the coming of the Lord, for His kingdom to be set up. I would bind by the Word of God that that type of thinking, that type of uh, thought process and doctrine uh, to be false by the Word of God. I find in the book of Daniel, uh, in the second chapter, we find here as Daniel was interpreted dream for Nebuchadnezzar uh, that he had had this dream that he couldn't interpret, but God gave Daniel the interpretation of the dream. Daniel didn't just think it up himself. God gave him the interpretation of the dream. I'll say this while I'm here. I don't believe that we have a, a, a new set of uh, uh, scriptures somewhere that we're going to find and discover uh, that uh, overrides everything else. I don't believe God's going to reveal something to us individually that we cannot find in the Holy Word of God. There's a lot in the people of the world today that think, well, the Lord told me or the Lord showed me or I've seen in a vision and it goes contrary to the word of God. I can assure you I know who's wrong and it ain't God. We find here in Daniel in the second chapter as he had seen this and it's quite a bit of scripture to read here, but I believe it is beneficial. It says here in verse 31 of Daniel 2, and thou, O king, sawest, behold, a great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee and the form thereof was terrible. This image, his head was of fine gold, his breast was in arms of silver, his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out uh, without hands which smote the image upon his feet that were iron and clay and break them in pieces. Then was the iron and the clay and brass and silver and gold broken into pieces together and uh, came, uh, became like chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. The stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream which uh, we will tell thee in the interpretation thereof before the king. That thou, O king, art the king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom and power and strength and glory. Whereso, and wheresoever the children <coughs> of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the, uh, of the heaven hath given thine, uh, he hath given to thine hand and made thee a ruler over all of them. Thou art the head of gold. So that's speaking of Nebuchadnezzar. And thee, and after thee shall rise another kingdom inferior to thee. Now, I believe from the studying of the, of the scriptures and from the history it would provide, that would be the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. And another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. I believe that by the study of the scriptures and from history to be uh, the uh, Grecian Empire under Alexander. And the fourth kingdom, which shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh pieces and subdueth all things, and iron that breaketh all these things, it should be breaking pieces and bruised. I believe this to be speaking of the Roman Empire and the Caesars. And whereas thou sawest the feet of toes and part of uh, potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom should be divided, but then it should be, uh, um, there should be uh, in it of the strength of iron, for as much as it was sawest the iron was mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with miry clay, and with <clears throat> they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, 
and they shall not cleave one to another, even as the iron is not mixed with clay. So he's giving him a description of, of this image that he saw uh, of the different kingdoms and the, uh, from the head of gold and, and all the way to the eye, to the feet and to the toes of what those things represented and the kingdoms there of which they represented, I, I believe have been pointed out and I believe, well, I know that history will point it out, but he also talked about this stone that had been cut out that was cut out without hands. And he said in, in verse 44, that in the days of these kings, speaking of the days of this, of this fourth kingdom, which is the time of the Romans, in the days of these kings shall the king, uh, God of heaven set up a kingdom. Now I want to stop right here and I want to uh, make reference to something that Israel and Jerusalem were already established. The city of Jerusalem was already there. The people of God were already there. Uh, they had a high place, a dwelling, walls built up. They even had a temple built within it uh, to carry out the ordinances of God as God had commanded. I don't believe that God was speaking here of a kingdom of a literal sense, but here he is speaking of the spiritual kingdom that he would set up here in this world. He said, and the God of heaven, heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. <coughs> For as much as thou sawest the stone cut out of the mountain without hands, without human effect, without human agency, without our assistance of mankind. So there was without hands. Who were the hands that were cutting this out? The hand of God. We find here it says, and thou sawest the stone that was out of the mountain without, uh, cut out of the mountain without hands, and it break in pieces the iron and the brass and the clay and the silver and the gold. The great God that hath made the, known to the king uh, what shall come to pass hereafter, that the interpretation of uh, the dream is certain and the interpretation uh, thereof is sure. So here what he is saying to him is, you've seen this, God has made this so that there is no doubt that you're going to see that this stone that is cut out of the mountain, this that is going to be established, this kingdom that is going to be set up, uh, that it is going to be there and it shall, what does the scripture say? It shall stand forever, which shall never be destroyed. I believe that goes in perfect harmony with what the Lord spoke there in the book of Mark in the ninth chapter in the first verse. And there in the great commission there in the book of Matthew, when he told them, lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. And when he told them that there should be some of them that stand there that should not taste death till they see the kingdom of God come in glory. He was not speaking of it being set up in some future time there in the Lord's time, but he was speaking of its future glory that would be revealed to all the world. So I want you to know that when he spoke these words, when he gave these promises, when he was here in his personal ministry and work and labor in this world, I want you to know it goes back to the promises of God that he would establish his kingdom here in this world that should never be destroyed. I mind also, y'all bear with me, and this probably is just scattered, makes no sense, devil's hindering me, and it, uh, I'm sure it don't make any sense. I hope it does better than what I'm able to bring it out. Over in the book of Isaiah in the second chapter, it says here in verse 2, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted in the hills and all nations shall flow into it. What did he say here in Daniel 2 and 35 in the latter part? And the stone which smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. I believe that to be the kingdom of God, the church of the true and the living God. And it says, and many people shall go, uh, shall go and say, come ye, let us go to the mountain of the Lord 
uh, to the house of God of Jacob and he shall teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion, speaking there of the church of the true and living God, for out of Zion shall go for the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. I want you to know that when the Lord said, when the promises were given uh, by the prophets, by the power and divine word of God, uh, that there would be a time that a kingdom would be established here in this world. He did not speak of a literal kingdom in the sense uh, of a nation uh, like we expect kingdoms and nations to be of this world today. Uh, but he was speaking of a spiritual kingdom that would be established by God Almighty that would never be destroyed. I am thankful today uh, to be a citizen of the United States of America. I am thankful today to have been raised in the state of Tennessee in these little country towns that I've been raised in. I am thankful today. I am proud uh, in the sense of thankful proud to say where I am from but let me assure you even greater than these natural things I I am thankful today to be a member of, been brought up in the church of the true and the living God. That I have been allowed to be a part of the promise of God, not only to the believers, not only to them that will be saved, but to them that will unite with the church that he is here today with the kingdom of God. I'm thankful. And I am not looking for a future event like uh, Abraham did. I mind the scriptures to say in the book of Hebrews in the 11th chapter and verse 10, speaking of Abraham, for he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker was God. I believe Abraham had a glimpse and he, could, he was looking forward to a time when there would be a foundation, a city built uh, for the people of God. And I'm going to tell you what, I don't have to look for that. I'm living in that time. Thanks be unto God that it's here, that it was established in the days of Jesus. We find here in the book of Matthew in the, ninth cha in the uh, 16th chapter, here is uh, they asked, uh, the Lord was asking him, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the son, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he told him that, uh, blessed are thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. He said, flesh and blood is not revealed unto thee, my father in heaven. I'm going to tell you what, flesh and blood still doesn't reveal it. Uh, it takes uh, repentance and faith toward Jesus Christ, putting your trust in him, and then you'll know He's the son of God. But he went on to say here, <coughs> and I say unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, now Peter was not the rock that is being spoken of here as some of the world would have declared and their religious organization would have you to believe. But the rock here that is being spoken of is Jesus Christ. And upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I want you to know today uh, that the Lord didn't build his uh, church kingdom upon some man, upon one of the apostles. I want you to understand that he built his church upon himself, him being the chief cornerstone. We find over here in Ephesians, uh, in the second chapter, uh, here we are find, uh, find in verse 19, and now therefore you are no more strangers or foreigners or fellow citizens with the, uh, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God, built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He is in which the building sits, but how it is squared up, it is squared up, it is laid upon Jesus Christ. I can give you some more scripture on that if you'd like. I'm going to give it to you whether you want it or not, I guess. 1 Corinthians 3, we find here in verse 11, For other foundation can no man lay than that it is laid, which is Jesus 
Christ. I want you to know the firm foundation on which we stand today is not on the foundation of men. It is not on the foundation uh, of, uh, of uh, what uh, man's principles and man's dictates, man's creeds. I am telling you today that we are a part of the kingdom who God promised would never be destroyed that would be here till His coming. I'm going to tell you today I am thankful to be a part of the little old country church on the side of the road. I am thankful to be a part of the city that was set up on a hill that cannot be hid, my brothers and sisters. I find that when the Lord come and he went and he prayed, he went into a mountain to pray. And when he had prayed, he called to him whom he would have loved them. He chose 12 and there he established his church upon himself being the chief cornerstone. And I'm going to tell you what, though the nations have fallen, all those that were before, those that were told in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, those kingdoms have fallen. Those kingdoms have went away. But what still remains, that kingdom that shall never be destroyed. I find here what the scriptures say in the book of Luke. And I'll try not to be too much longer. Uh, we find here in the book of Luke in the first chapter. <coughs> here the good news. Good news uh, that the Savior was coming. Gabriel, the messenger angel, came to Mary there and began to tell her that she was going to be with child. She was going to have the Son of God. And she began, he began to describe to her what was going on. I'm going to imagine, imagine her wonderment and imagine her what she was thinking, the overwhelming feeling. Uh, that she was going to carry within her that which was the Son of God. I, I, can't, I can't even fathom that. My mind don't even wrap around that. Oh, but she was a blessed woman. That's what he said of her. Blessed thou art of Ugmingham is what he said. Verse 31 of Luke 1 says, And behold, thou that thou conceive in thy room and bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. I believe that the Jewish nation today, and we need to pray for Israel. We need to pray for the people that are being, uh, that nation being persecuted across the world. I, I'm going to tell you what, they... They are not the only reason that Christ died there on that cross. We're all the reason he died there on that cross. But that promise was not to them solely as a nation. But that promise was that he would set up that spiritual kingdom and that it would reign forever. As he had promised King David in the long ago, that there would be one come from his bowels, from his loins, so to speak. Uh, that Solomon, that David wanted to build a house for the Lord. He wanted to build a permanent structure for the Lord because they had been serving the Lord in, in a tent, so to speak. It wasn't a, necessarily a tent, as, <clears throat> but it was uh, in the way that it was looked at. Not a permanent structure. And he wanted to build it. And he said, you can't. But the one coming from you can. And I'm going to tell you what. He built it. And Solomon did come along. And then Solomon did build a temple. Let me tell you what. He wasn't just speaking there of a natural temple. He was not just speaking there of a physical building. But he was speaking of the bringing in of Jesus Christ through the lineage of David down to us that he would set up a spiritual kingdom. And he did. He set it up there on the side of the mountain. That's where I believe it was. I believe he called people along the way, but when it come time to establish it, as the scriptures teach me, and did it in the top of the mountains, he cut that stone out of the mountainside. And yes, I believe that's where she was established at. And I want you to know, he says here, this kingdom shall never be destroyed. Never be destroyed. Never be destroyed. There will be some standing here. Some standing in this world when he comes back. Now that promise was given to his church. And that promise of God will remain true. And he will remain faithful to that promise 
if the church remains true and faithful to Him, every local body that is in existence today can flourish and can live and can exist and be alive and watching for the coming of the Lord and be here when He comes. I believe that as sure as I'm standing here. But if we fall away, does it mean that Friendship Church will be here when the Lord comes back? If we fall away from the Lord, that ain't the Lord falling, uh, failing on His promise. That's failing on us to be faithful to the Lord. But I can assure you, this today gives me confidence. I, I, I've uh, done things for work in my life that if I believed in them, I mean, if I was convinced of them, this is right and, and, and you've got support. You know, sometimes when your bosses don't support you, uh, those in leadership over you, they want you to do something. And then when you go do it, they back away uh, and when it don't turn out like they thought and they back away and they want to lay blame on you. Why uh, it, There's no confidence there. And there's no confidence sometimes in the world when you're trying to promote something that you're really not uh, invested in or believe in. But let me tell you what. I am assured that the one who sits at the head of the church, which is Jesus Christ, will not shrink away, will not be uh, standing off from us, but be ever there, ever present to support us when we go forward. And it gives me with confidence to know that we can preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified, that we can still preach the doctrines of Christ as our forefathers did, that we can still hold on to an old time way and do not have to yield for the world today to exist. People will say, well, we better change. We better adapt to the world. We better bring in things of entertainment. We better bring in things that will uh, bring our children, that will hold on to our children. I'm going to tell you what, if the Word of God won't hold on to them, won't hold them in here, and the Spirit in the old time way, then nothing will. What will we really have if we neglect and we slip off the rock of Jesus Christ? You can build your church on the sand if you want to. But I'm going to tell you what you need to do is you need to make sure she is established on the rock. And if she is established on the rock, you need to help by the grace of God keep her there and the old paths and the old way. And God is able to still help us. Will storms rise? Will the winds blow? Will the rains come? Will they beat upon the rock, upon the house? Yes, sir. Have they? Yes. Have they? Has the church been persecuted? Yes. Has the church withstood it? By the grace of God, yes. Have they tried to extinguish her? Yes. Have they been successful? No. She still stands today. Standing firm. Declaring the gospel. I'm going to tell you what I can stand here with all the confidence in the world to tell you that when the Lord comes back, if we'll hold on, if we'll get where we need to be, we will be here when the Lord comes back. There will be people. Doesn't mean I'll be here. I may be dead and gone, done be with the Lord. But this way, this way can still be here Preaching and practicing. Say, well, Brother Kevin, I wonder if it gets to a time where the government won't let us come out here and meet. Government has no say-so whatsoever of whether or not we can exist, whether we can continue on. Say, well, but we can't come out here and meet. Well, they used to meet in the hills and the hollers and meet in caves and meet in houses. Let me tell you what they cannot bring in. The governments of this world in this day and time uh, right now, you hear of it on the news and I, I watch a little more of it than, than I normally do. I mean, they desire to extinguish as nations of this world, people who are proclaiming even those that are within the boundaries of this nation of the United States of America that want Israel wiped off the map. Let me tell you, I believe God will preserve us what I believe, but I'm going to tell you what. If they, the devil had his due, you know what he would really want? He'd want to extinguish his church in this world. But he can't do it. The promise was given and the promises of God are true. Let all men uh, be liars because God is true. I believe it's what it said in all. It says, let God be true and all men liars. I want you to know, be confident. Now don't get, let that get you lazy. 
but be confident. Oh, we've got the firm foot. We've got the support of the Lord. If we'll get where we need to, be in the shape we need to, my goodness what he can do. But it'll be here. This is our message. It's pretty scattered and pretty weak. Uh, but I pray God will take it and use it to his honor and his glory. May God bless you. And thank you for listening.